I'm Dr. Fakir already, and this is Human Immunodeficiency Virus in Adults, Part 2. Here are your reliable resources. So DHHS guidelines are available for free. There is one guideline from DHHS for pre-exposure prophylaxis that we will talk about. There are also two different guidelines for post-exposure prophylaxis, one for occupational exposure and one for non-occupational exposure. The recommendations are similar. Uh, in this um, presentation, we will focus on non-occupational post-exposure prophylaxis. There is also a resource for drug-resistant database and a resource for drug interactions. The next learning objective is given a patient at risk for exposure to HIV, recommend appropriate pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP regimen. Generally speaking, there are three groups of people who are at risk of getting HIV and they are qualified to get pre-exposure prophylaxis. So these uh, groups of people do not have HIV, so we want to prevent them from having uh, HIV. So the first group is people who are men who have sex with men or MSM as well as transgender women. So transgender women are people who were born a uh, man and then later they change uh, their sex. Now, it's not to say that all MSM or transgender women are at risk of getting HIV. Only if they have risky behavior is when they are at risk of um, getting HIV and then they qualify to get pre-exposure prophylaxis. So if these people have HIV positive sex partner, they will be at risk. As well as if they have a history of re recent bacterial uh, sexually transmitted infection uh, because typically the risk factors are the same for sexually transmitted infection so whatever they did that caused them to get sti is likely to put them at risk of getting hiv additionally this sexually transmitted infection will cause uh, some damage to the physical barrier uh, for example um, the endothelial lining of the sex organs will be damaged, which means that HIV can penetrate easier. A high number of sex partners, history of inconsistent or no condom use, as well as commercial sex work are risk factors that uh, places MSM at uh, high risk of getting HIV. When it comes to heterosexual women or men, of course, if they have HIV positive sex, uh, sexual partners, as well as uh, recent bacterial sec uh, sexually transmitted infections, a high number of sex partners and a history of inconsistent or no condom use and commercial sex work are also risk factors that places uh, these uh, patients at risk of getting HIV. In addition, in high HIV prevalence area or network, uh, these people will also be at risk. And the last group is uh, people who inject uh, drugs. And if these people have HIV positive injecting partners, as well as if they share injection uh, equipments, that would place these people at risk of getting HIV. So these patients are candidates uh, for, uh, for getting uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Now, before these uh, people are actually eligible to get PrEP, there needs to be a documented negative HIV test. So because PrEP only uses uh, the prescription for PrEP is a daily uh, continuing oral doses of Truvada, and more recently Descovy was approved um, earlier um, this month. So because this is only the backbone of treatment, it doesn't have a third agent, it's important to make sure the patient does not have HIV. Because if they do have HIV, the HIV will develop resistant to uh, Truvada or Descovy. So a, a recent test within the past seven days is required. Additionally, there are questionnaires that we have uh, patients fill so that we have to make sure there are no signs and symptoms of acute HIV infection. Uh, because uh, some of those tests can miss acute HIV. So we want to make sure the patient does not have symptoms. Because uh, tenofovir is renally cleared, we want to make sure the patient does, uh, does have normal renal function and no contraindications for these medications. And because uh, these uh, drugs are also used to treat hepatitis B, it's important to actually uh, test uh, patients for hepatitis B 
uh, to make sure that if they never had hepatitis B to make sure they are vaccinated against it or if they haven't um, had the vaccination uh, maybe they have hepatitis B and that's important because once we start Truvada for HIV prophylaxis it's automatically treating hepatitis B and then if one day the patient decides that they no longer need the uh, PrEP and discontinue it then there can be reactivation of hepatitis B which can uh, be very dangerous it can cause severe acute um, hepatic failure and uh, flares uh, which can occasionally be fatal now the guidelines recommends that the patient should not get the drug supply for more than 90 days so typically we give a prescription for uh, for a 30 day supply with two refills and the reason is uh, the patient has to come back to get a pre another prescription after, uh, after 90 days and that gives them uh, you know it gives us a reason to actually test them for HIV. So at most, uh, it will take them three months to come back and that's when we can do HIV testing to make sure they haven't developed HIV because if they do develop HIV, it's important to uh, switch them from uh, PrEP to an actual full treatment. It also gives us um, an opportunity to do medication adherence counseling, behavioral risk reduction support, uh, side effect assessment and of course sexually transmitted infection uh, symptom assessment and because of Truvada and Descovy um, we do want to um, actually assess the renal function every at least every six months now before starting patients on PrEP it's important to have a documented HIV test and this HIV test it has to be a blood test so, you know, including it can be a finger, finger stick uh, uh, point of care test, but we cannot use something that's, for example, uh, oral, oral test uh, from saliva. It has to be blood because these are more reliable and we have to make sure the patient does not have HIV before starting. And of course, you should not uh, take the patient's word for it if they say they've been tested and it was negative or if the document is anonymous, uh, these are not good enough. You actually have to have an official document uh, stating that the patient is HIV negative or you can conduct the test yourself. Now, once somebody starts uh, PrEP, it's not really known how long does it take for the protection to kick in. Uh, something that we do know is that we do know from pharmacokinetic studies like how long does it take to get enough concentrations in the target tissues so because these are oral medications and these data are specifically with Truvada because Descovy was uh, only recently approved for this indication so for Truvada at least it takes about 20 days to get enough concentration of this in the blood and it takes about 20 days to get enough concentration in the uh, cervical vaginal tissue. It does take uh, faster to get enough concentration in the rectal tissue. So it takes about seven days. And you know, if you think about it, this is taken orally. So some of it is absorbed and some of it is not absorbed. So the part that's not absorbed actually goes to the site that we actually needed in the rectal tissue. Uh, and the part that's absorbed goes into the blood so that explains why it takes longer to get um, concentration in the blood and the in the cervical uh, vaginal tissue because this also needs blood needs to uh, go to this uh, site um, so that that's why uh, these numbers are a little different and there's uh, no data in penile tissue so if you know if i had to guess it takes also about 20 days to get enough uh, concentrations uh, here now, one thing uh, is that uh, Truvada is approved for uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis in MSM, in heterosexual couples, as well as injection drug use users. Uh, Descovy, however, is only approved for MSM or transgender women. And that's because it's, uh, that's the only thing that we have studied so far. Uh, there are no studies uh, in heterosexual couples or people who inject uh, drugs. So... If you were to use Descovy over Truvada, it should only be for MSM or transgender women. Now, there are some contraindications to PrEP. So, you know, if someone does have HIV infection, uh, you know, you should not be using PrEP. Instead, you should do a full treatment of HIV. Uh, for PrEP specifically, the creatinine clearance is uh, cutoff is uh, less than 60. So if somebody's creatinine clearance is 50, for example, they do not, uh, they cannot get uh, PrEP. And this is specifically for Truvada. Uh, when it comes to Descovy, uh, 
uh, the creatine crunch cutoff cut uh, in the package insert is less than 30. The guideline has not been updated yet to include Descovy. So right now, the guidelines recommendation is specifically about Truvada. And of course, in adherence is extremely important, not just uh, for treatment of HIV, but also for PrEP. Uh, there is a very strong correlation between adherence and effectiveness of PrEP. So if someone is not ready to adhere to a daily PrEP, that's actually a contraindication to PrEP because it can actually cause more harm. Because if someone does not take, uh, if, so, if someone is not adherent and they do get HIV, typically drug resistant HIV does occur in these patients. Now, other things to consider, as I mentioned, is chronic active hepatitis B. So it's just important to know if someone has hepatitis B, uh, you should uh, not just discontinue PrEP. So uh, if you are to discontinue PrEP, you should uh, at least have another agent to cover the hepatitis B in those patients to prevent reactivation of the infection. Uh, it's important to assess patients uh, for, uh, for uh, pregnancy or attempting to conceive. Uh, also, other things to consider before starting PrEP is uh, if the patient has other nephrotoxic drugs because Truvada is nephrotoxic. Uh, you know, you may want to balance risk versus benefit. The same with osteopenia and osteoporosis because Truvada can cause uh, bone mineral density loss. And if patients do have this, uh, that could be reason to actually switch uh, Truvada to Descovy instead, as long as the patient is MSM or transgender uh, woman. Now, when it comes to monitoring for PrEP, it is important to uh, get the HIV testing every uh, three months. And, you know, while we do that, we also screen for sexually transmitted infections. Uh, it is important to look for signs and symptoms of acute HIV, because if you do detect this, it's important to switch the patient to full treatment. Um, and as always, we need to assess and provide support for side effects, adherence, risky behavior, and always answer any question the patient has. Uh, for females specifically, it's important to get a pregnancy test every three months. And the reason this pregnancy is important is because um, if someone is on PrEP and gets pregnant and they develop HIV, it's crucial, extremely crucial to start them uh, on tre uh, full treatment in order to prevent transmission of HIV to the fetus. And then after that, every six months, it's important to assess renal function because of tenofovir. And of course, as always, uh, sexually transmitted infections. And then annually, it's important to evaluate the need to continue PrEP. So PrEP is something that people need as long as they are at risk of getting HIV. W uh, once they are no longer at risk of getting HIV, uh, it's unnecessary to continue PrEP. So it's kind of like a birth control. As long as someone is at risk of uh, getting pregnant, they should be on birth control. But as you know, once they are no longer at risk of getting pregnant, then birth control is not uh, necessary. So that's a similar uh, scenario. Now, recently there was a Senate Bill 159 that was uh, signed by the governor of California, uh, which will be effective in July of 2020, uh, which added uh, to the um, you know to the services that pharmacies can provide. Uh, so a pharmacist now or I should say starting July 2020, may furnish HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis and HIV post-exposure prophylaxis, which I will talk about shortly. Uh, so it basically says that um, the pharmacies can uh, furnish at least a 30-day supply and up to 60-day supply of PrEP as long as the patient has a HIV blood test that's uh, been negative in the past seven days and they should have no self-reported signs and symptoms of acute HIV infection. They should not have any uh, contraindication. And the patient uh, and, the per uh, and the pharmacist should provide counseling to the patient. And this counseling cannot be refused by the patient, unlike uh, some of the other counseling that the pharmacist can provide and the patient can actually waive. Now, one thing is that uh, the pharmacist can only provide a 60, up to a 60-day supply every two years. And the reason is that this is really intended to get people access to PrEP uh, 
uh, to just get them started and then link them to care. So the patients, you know, can do this uh, one time every two years, get a 60 day supply. And then they have 60 days to actually get the primary care provider to receive subsequent pres prescription because they do need an ongoing um, monitoring for HIV testing and all the other monitoring parameters that I talked about. So, uh, you know, the, pharma uh, the pharmacy service is really just to get them started and then link, link them to care.